Hello, Math 7 students. Um, welcome to our third video for our lessons. Um, I'm turning to the table of contents to show you and remind you that you need to be writing in your um, titles in your table of contents for every set of lessons. Um, and today's lesson is called Identifying Proportional and Non-Proportional Relationships in Tables. Okay, that's the lesson that we're going to be working on today. Um, we can find this in my notebook on page 13. So I'm going to turn in my notebook to page 13 right now. And here we are. All right, so as we stated earlier, the title, Identifying Proportional and Non-Proportional Relationships in Tables. Our goal, goal for today is, today we are going to learn how to check if a table is proportional or not. Okay. Hopefully you're remembering what proportional means. Um, we've been working on it for a couple of lessons already, and hopefully you have a good idea of what that is. Um, the question for today is, what can you use to determine if a table is proportional? There's one specific thing that if you find it, then you know it's proportional. If you can't find it, then you know it's not proportional. Your job today is to figure out what that is. All right, quickly a review of a ratio table. Remember, a ratio table is a table with a line down and lines across. Um, usually they are labeled with the X value on the left side and the Y value on the right side. The reason for this is because the X value represents the amount that you start with. The Y value represents the amount you end with. So basically what's going to happen is X is going to be something we're going to do some mathematical operation to x, and it's going to give us the answer, which is y. Okay? So x is also known as an input, and y is also known as an output. Those are other names for those. Okay? So if we look at this ratio table, we can see that if I start with 1, and I do something to 1, when it's finished, I get 2 as my answer. I start with 2, and I do something to 2, and when I'm finished, I get 4 as the answer. I get 3, do something to 3, and when I'm done, the answer comes out as a 6. Then I try 4, do something to 4, and when the answer comes out, it's an 8. And then I try 5, do something to 5. When I'm done, the answer I get is 10. So our job, looking at this specific ratio table, and all ratio tables are different. They're based on the ratio that you're given. But what you need to do when you read a ratio table is you have to say to yourself, huh, what did I do to 1 to make it a 2? What did I do to 2 to make it a 4? What did I do to 3 to make it a 6? What did I do to 4 to make it an 8? And what did I do to 5 to make it a 10? Huh, interesting. I think that some of you are already figuring this out. So basically what you're going to do is plug in the x value, times it by the constant, and you get the y value. Huh, I've never heard that word until today. The word constant. And constant, the word constant in math means exactly how it sounds. It's constantly happening. So if you can find a pattern and it's constantly happening every single time, then you know you found the constant, okay? So let's take a look at this, and I apologize for my pen error. Hopefully you recognize that number, but we'll get there in a minute. Okay, so here's how you figure it out. We're trying to find the constant. Well, first of all, we're trying to see if there is a constant, and if there is, you have to tell me what it is, okay? So one times something gives me two. What is that something? You're correct. If you said 2, you are correct. So we would write a 2 right there. So everybody needs to go ahead and write a 2 right there. Let's try the next one. 2 times something gives me 4. What did you say? 2? Then you are correct. You need to put another 2 right there. 3 times something gives me 6. What is the something in this one? 2. Nice job. 4 times something gives me 8. What's the something again? Two again, oh, you should be noticing a pattern by now. Five times something gives me 10. What is that something again? Two. 
Now, looking at this line, because you guys should have written them all in. I did not write them in. You need to write them in, please. What number do you see on every line going down? That is correct. It was 2. So the constant of this ratio table is 2. Since every single input that we put in was multiplied by 2, then we get to say that this ratio table right here is proportional. Okay? Boys and girls, are you understanding that? So if the same number is being multiplied by every input to get this output, then you have a proportional relationship. If it isn't, then it's not proportional. So I'm going to try one right here really fast. I'm going to just write one really quick. So let's have my X and Y values. Let's say I put a 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And let's say I start with 1 and I end up with 6. I, start, I then try 2 and I end up with 12. I then get a 3 and I end up with 15. I then get a 4 and I get a 24. I then get a 5 and I end up with 30. Okay. So now we have to see if this one has a constant. So 1 times what number gives me 6? Everybody, what is it? Good, 6. Okay, 2 times what number gives me 12? 6, nice job. 3 times what number gives me 15? Uh oh, five. Four times what number gives me 24? Six. And five times what number gives me 30? Six. Okay, so now we have to see if this is a proportional table. Okay, that's what we're trying to figure out. Is the table proportional? Six, six, five, uh oh, right here. So, since this is not all 6, we have to say that this table right here is not proportional. Okay? Boys and girls, do you see it? Go back to this one. You guys wrote 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2 all the way down. They were all 2s. So, what do we know about this table right here? This table is proportional. Okay? So, it says right here, what can you use to determine if a table is proportional? Um, what do we use to see if a table is proportional? The answer is right there, guys. Okay. Um, something that you need to look at, here's another way to write what we were doing with this table. So we get the answer. So answer is also known as an output Y answer. Answer equals the constant times the X value, which is what we start with, the input. You learned that in yesterday's lesson, so hopefully you're remembering that. So we're basically pulling in some information from yesterday's lesson. Okay, I'm turning the page. Let's see what is next on the next page for this lesson. Okay, turning the page, and here we go. You need to be able to tell me um, the title because it's a new page. Identifying proportional and non-proportional relationships in tables. Um, so the next thing that we need to talk about is if all x values are multiplied by the same number, then that is the constant. And that's what we just talked about with our practice. A constant proves proportionality. And I gave that two stars because that's very, very important. If you have a constant number being multiplied by every x value, then you know that the, ta the ratio table is proportional. If we don't have all of them, like this example right here, we had 6, 6, 5, 6, 6, uh, that would be an, a bad mark. This is making the whole table not proportional, okay? So now you get to try one without me, okay? And this is the practice problem that you're going to do on your own tonight with this video's notes. This is it, kids. We're done. This is all we're learning today because remember, identifying proportional and non-proportional relationships in tables. So you're saying proportional or non-proportional. If it's proportional, it has a constant. If it doesn't have a constant, then it's not proportional. Okay, so let's practice. This task is called a wedding dinner. So everybody think of a time when you've been invited to a wedding. You're going to a wedding and they decide that at this wedding that the main meal is going to be enchiladas. 
yummy, yummy, yummy. So what they have said is that they're setting up this ratio table for enchiladas per guest. Okay, so we have enchiladas per guest. So this one is saying for every five guests, there are 10 enchiladas. For every 50 guests, there are 100 enchiladas. For every 150 guests, there are 300 enchiladas. For every 1,500 guests, there are 300 enchiladas. For every two guests, there are two enchiladas. Interesting. Okay. So your job, just like we did over here, I would highly recommend you write it out. So down here on the paper, instead of writing one time, you're going to put 10 times what number equals 5. 100 times what number equals 50. Just like we did on this one. Okay? Set it up the exact same way. Remember, the x value, this is the x value over here always. This is always the x value. So the x value times something gives you the y value. The x value times something always gives you the y value. You need to remember that, boys and girls. If you set it up incorrectly, it could cause a big problem. So right down here, when you're telling me if something is proportional or not, because the question says, is this a proportional relationship? You need to remember, x times something gives me or is equal to my y value. So you're going to take your first x value. I'll help you get started. And you're going to write time 10, because that's the first um, x value times something equals, what did it spit out? 10 and 5, so the 5 goes right here, okay? And then the next one would be 100 times something gave me only 50, okay? And you're going to continue that pattern until you get all the way through your ratio table. If all of the numbers that are on this something, so how many do we have? One, two, three, four, five. So we can put five blanks right here. One, oh no, one, two, three, four, five. So if all of these blanks are the same and that same number is sitting on that line right there, what do we get to say? It is the constant and it's a proportional relationship. If they're different, what does that tell you? It is not proportional, okay? I hope that helps. I hope it makes sense. Your job is to finish this part of our notes and come back to school ready to check it on the board in the morning. Make sure that you get this done because I will come around class and be looking for an ETL check. Okay, very quickly to close up our lesson, let's go back to our question of our lesson. Okay. Remember our goal today, we are going to learn how to check if a table is proportional or not. Hopefully you we're able to identify that. The question is, what can you use to determine if a table is proportional? I'll give you a big, gigantic hint. It is the something. What do we call the something? I'm pointing to it. Hopefully you're paying attention. All right, kiddos, make sure you answer this question as well. So you need to answer your question of your lesson, and you also need to figure out the wedding dinner problem. Okay? All right, have a good one, and I'll talk